No. They do it because they want what's best. Amen. That's the point, isn't it? You know, I want to explain this because a lot of people have heard this. We've got to get to this part. Jesus said, and I, I don't have it memorized, but in Matthew 23, I think it's uh, verse 18. He said, the one who would be greatest among you must be your servant. He said, the Gentiles' leaders lord it over them. But the one who would be greatest among you must be your servant. Now, he is not saying what everybody thinks. He's talking about our attitude, A. And B, I want you to think about this. When Elijah called down fire on people because they were opposing his ministry, why was he able to do that? It's so simple, but I want, I want to say it because I, I know you're afraid I'll, I'll call you out if you're wrong. So let me just say this. You may not, I mean, and everybody may be right, which would be great. Yes, sir. Amen. He was doing the Lord's will. That's great. He was the man appointed for that time, wasn't he? He was doing the Lord's will. Let me just say this. In the Old Testament, God had one major focus. And if you want to understand when you read this Bible, the difference between Old Testament and New, because there is a difference. God's the same, but there's a difference in focus. If you remember this, when you read it, it'll pretty much always fall into place. Because a lot of people preach Old and New like it's the same. It's not. God's the same. His plan is the same. But what he's trying to accomplish for his plan is not. In the Old Testament, the reason Elijah would call down fire on people that opposed him is because he was trying to preserve the seed. The Lord God overall, because I've had people say, God, God was so cruel in the Old Testament, right? So cruel, he killed all these people. Had no choice. Why? Because the overall plan was to, for Jesus to manifest and save mankind. So what's more important? Saving the Amorites or making sure Christ appears? What's more important? I'm asking you. What's more important? You're going to say that these people should be allowed. Because remember when Israel went in to possess land, they had to kill. A lot of times women and children, you, you remember this? And King Saul got in trouble because he was supposed to kill all of them and, and even their animals and didn't do it. And the kingship was taken from him and given to King David. And people say, so cruel. Why did God do that? Guys, you've got to understand. Jesus came. This is what blows people away. They can't get it. Jesus came as a man. He learned what he knew from reading the law. He learned who he was from reading the law. The Old Testament, Isaiah 61. He read it and the Holy Ghost said, that's you, bro. That's you. That's what you're going to do. This, this is how he learned. So let me tell you something. If the Israelites had mixed with Amorites and other people and lost, as they did at certain points, and they got put in slavery in Babylon, right? All these kind of things. Why? Because he had to preserve the tradition of the law so that Jesus could grow up and hear the law and hear the great exploits that God had done bringing them out of Egypt and all these things why because in studying that and getting on fire with that he realized his ministry this had to be preserved at all costs no matter who you had to kill I hate to say it like that but you had to have Jesus come forth and go to the cross there is no plan B. You had to have this. Now flip it over. So, so let me say this. Authority and leadership under the Old Testament involved killing people. If it took that. Why? Because the most important thing was that Jesus Christ would manifest and die for the sins of the world. But guys, we're on the other side of that now. That's no longer the most important thing. That was the most important thing. The most important thing now is totally different, you see. Now the most important thing is that people would hear the truth and believe it. It's already been manifest, you see. God's not into killing people that much anymore. Now he's into people being submitted to him so they can believe. So Jesus said, 
He who, would, he who would now be greatest among you must be your servant. Why? Let me tell you something. You're not going to believe something unless somebody presents it in a good way. You believe in free will? You believe you have free will? You believe you chose God? You believe you chose Jesus Christ? You know why you did? A, it was true. B, it was presented in a way that you could. Faith comes by hearing. The apostles existed in the early church. And I want you to know, everybody believed in apostles. For the most part. You know why? Because they grew up seeing it and hearing it. They believed in it. But what happens when you grow up today in a church where all the apostles and the authority of the church is gone? You don't believe in that. Thank you. So what happens if you grow up in a kingdom and the people that work for the king, the masses don't believe in them? The people who would have authority to speak to issues, the people in the kingdom don't believe they have authority. What happens? Now some would say, oh, you just ought to kill them. No, you don't want to kill them. You want to save them. So you've got to have the heart of God. He don't want to kill these people. He wants to save them. He loves them. So you don't go calling fire down on them. You become their servant. You understand how leadership works in the New Testament? You become the servant. Why? Because then they can receive. And it's important for us to teach this kind of thing. Why? Because it won't matter that apostles exist unless the people believe in them. It won't matter. Let me say it another way. It won't matter that Jesus died on a cross unless the people believe in him. <laughs> it won't matter that healing is a part of the redemption package unless the people believe in it. You see? So leadership has changed from old to new. Now the people with authority become the servant. Amen? Does it make sense? Why? Because there's a different purpose. Now we are wanting people to be able to accept authority. But the only, the authority exists anyway, folks. But the only way it's effective for the people is that they receive it, just like salvation. 